High above the suburban village of Didsbury in Greater Manchester, on the rooftop of this building, is a strange sight. These are no ordinary chimneys. You'll notice there's a mismatch between colours, as if a newer, more modern part of the chimney has been added on. Looking closer, you'll see that each brick has been nailed onto a backboard, and there's been an attempt to match the style and colour of the original chimneys. At the top, the new sections are missing their chimney pots, and further down are bolted panels for easy access. Even closer inspection reveals a warning sign for radio frequencies. What we're looking at here is a dual provider cell site. The narrow streets and pavements of Didsbury don't leave much room for monopole street installations, so the roof of this building has been chosen instead. There's three sets of panels mounted on the roof behind these faux brickwork facades, and the biggest clue of all is the bundles of coaxial feeders coming out of the bottom. They were installed sometime between 2013 and 2016 and served Vodafone and O2 customers. Now we've covered these disguised transmitter sites on the channel before and they're nothing secret. They were put up in a time when mobile phone transmitters and the mask that supported them were a bit taboo. There were those that were concerned about them spoiling the rural landscape and those fearing that this new digital mobile phone infrastructure caused cancer. The most common types are the disguised tree sites and I've done a few videos on these which you can see in the description and at the end of this video. The first ever disguised cell site was a pine tree in Denver, Colorado in 1992. The fear amongst people in the cellular boom was considerable. A group of protesters even pulled down a T-Mobile mast with a Land Rover after undoing the bolts that held it down. When the police turned up with the operator, there was a firearms incident due to a protester with a shotgun. During the growth of the Orange mobile phone network, it began targeting populated areas rather than roads, so their aggressive growth strategy meant that new masts were closer to homes and buildings. This is where disguise masts such as this came about. A basic cellular mast costs around £15,000 according to certain mobile phone companies but the disguised ones can cost anywhere in the region of 60,000 and more. Nowadays, mobile phone architecture is common in today's urban, suburban and even rural landscape, which is why we've all probably noticed a huge rollout of these new 5G towers all over the place. Brick-covered installations such as this are commonly used on older buildings such as churches and some look more convincing than others. Some of these sites are obvious and probably draw the eye more than a standard cellular site would. This one in Didsbury is probably one of the better ones when viewed from a distance. Behind the brick fascia is a standard cellular panel such as this and they point in all directions around the building to cover the surrounding area. While we're here, just up the road, I noticed the remains of an interesting antenna on the roof above a shop. This would have been used with a cordless phone system such as this which were actually illegal. In fact, this is the most dangerous setup Nokia never made. If you'd like to see more on this, as well as some other disguised cell sites, then check the links below and at the end of this video. And if you know of any more disguised sites in Manchester and the surrounding area, then let me know too.